Anyway, so welcome. Um, so I'm talking about an SMS application in Flask and Twilio to call farmers um, in Ethiopia and the DR. So I'm like not primarily a web developer, so uh, it's, this is kind of for folks who would want to do something like this and to realize it's really actually not too complicated. The, the application itself is pretty simple, but it, it does sort of what we need it to do. Um, and also to give you an overview of like some of the problems that are out there in the developing world that we're like less familiar with here um, and how a lot of the tools that we already know can be used to solve really, really important problems. So the motivation for this was um, I mostly work on like data and modeling um, modeling weather indices, so like using like hierarchical Bayesian models to predict weather. And those weather indices are used for microinsurance. So you're probably all familiar with microfinance, but microinsurance is like these small amounts of insurance that goes to farmers. And they're supposed to indemnify them when there's large catastrophic occurrences. So in, in a lot of places, like in villages, people will insure each other on the small, like idiosyncratic risk. You know, like my farm didn't do well today, so I borrow from my, my neighbor or my family member. But microinsurance is supposed to cover these large risks where everybody's hit at the same time. Um, so that's sort of what a field, I've seen a lot of fields like this where there's just nothing. And, you know, you lose all of your capital that you've invested for the season. Um, so, and so, so the weather insurance that the models feed into, the weather indices feed into, um, this insurance indemnifies you based on a rainfall uh, index. So it'll pay out if the rainfall falls below a certain amount, um, and it won't otherwise. And the, the purpose of this is that it kind of gets rid of moral hazard and adverse selection that you'd normally see in insurance. Like if you think of health insurance, uh, well, actually that's not a great example, but with traditional ag insurance, um, the problem is, is you'll get like bad types going, buying the insurance and also farmers potentially destroying their crops so they get a payout. So the first type of thing is adverse selection. You get adverse types uh, self-selecting in. And the moral hazard is that you can't monitor them. So weather insurance is supposed to um, sort of solve both those things. But it's really hard to scale um, for two reasons. One is most of the sales are done door to door, as with anything in, in developing countries. Um, and that takes a long time, and you can't find people because they're in fields like this, and you literally have to walk out and like go find that person. And how do you do that with thousands of people? And then the other issue is uh, satellite data. So most of the indices that we use to predict weather come from satellite data. And that satellite data is only as good as its own resolution. And so um, it's not going to do very good at predicting world. Well, it's not going to be a very good uh, input for predicting microclimates because it has like a one kilometer by one kilometer resolution. So anything within that, you're not going to see any variation. So, um, so that leads to something called basis risk. Sometimes the insurance pays out when it shouldn't, and sometimes it, um, it doesn't pay out when it should. There's not a lot of like predicted variation around the cutoff. So... So that leads to <laughs> needing more programmers um, in this area, really, because um, there's problems like these that are pr relative, I mean, not easy to solve, but need people to solve them. And most of the NGOs that work in this space have not a lot of technical capacity to, to solve these things. Um, and SMS applications can be pretty helpful. They don't solve everything. Obviously, like people need to be trained in what, they're, what product they're being given, but um, there's a lot of pros. So, 
So the idea with this application was to basically collect uh, twofold, collect information about rainfall to sort of cross-validate satellite data, um, but also to be able to allow farmers to sign up for insurance remotely. Um, so it sort of solves two things. It solves, to some extent, the data problem and the data validation problem, and it also solves uh, the problem of being, not being able to scale that quickly when you have to go door to door. And I think that's not, it's not unique to this question that I'm discussing. Uh, it's a pretty common problem in any kind of service that you're providing in, a, in the developing world, whether it's in like health, health information, uh, any kind of information service. These are the two things that need to be solved. Um, so the pros are that, you know, the SMS application will remove travel time. It can um, help collect, like, more crowdsourced data. Uh, a nice example of this is a company called Premise that does a lot of this crowdsourcing where they get people to take pictures of stuff that they need information on. People send the pictures to them, and they use machine learning to basically learn uh, what's in the pictures and um, they aggregate the data. Um, and the other nice thing about an SMS location, which ultimately would be like the final goal, is that uh, you know a lot of NGOs like some sort of gold standard like randomized control trial to test if something worked. So a, ra not a randomized control trial is similar to an A/B test, and but they're like they're, they're very costly and they're generally paper driven. Um, and so with SMS, you can test a lot of things much more quickly. Uh, you can randomize how you change the question, uh, randomize who's offered the SMS service, and um, test outcomes with that kind of application. Um, the cons are like that you're not training people directly. You're not facing them, door, facing them. You know, if you go door to door, you face them, and people have a sense of like trust that you're not just spamming them. Um, and the other thing is, uh, say with insurance, you need it to be connected to mobile, some sort of mobile money. And a lot of people are not signed up for mobile money in the developing world. Even though they'll have simple phones with SMS, um, the next step to get mobile money is just, it's cumbersome. So there's already existing solutions out there for this um, type of application. I'm just listing three that I know fairly well. But um, so like Voda Mobile or Engage Spark, these are organizations that provide basically customized uh, web solutions where you can enter in like a list of phone numbers and uh, type in the questions that you want to be asked via SMS or voice. And then they have a lot of customizations around this. Um, so, so then the question is like, why reinvent the wheel? Um, well. Doing it yourself is a lot cheaper, <laughs> um, and it's, it's relatively simple. Um, when it comes to customization, it's not that simple. But for the purposes of what I needed, which is just basically send out a bunch of uh, voice, uh, collect the responses, and stick it into a database or CSV, uh, the solution's pretty fast. Like you, could prob you can do it on your own in a few months or less. So um, the, the issue of not using something that's customized is um, if you're going to use an aggregator like Twilio, um, they don't sell numbers in all countries. So in that case, then you need to use some sort of SMS gateway where you, you essentially uh, buy a phone, you stick it in country, it's going to have some gateway on it and you connect to that gateway, which then sends out all your calls. Uh, if the phone's off or something happens to it, then it's not going to work. So <laughs> it's risky. Um, you can also use, say, for instance, I first started testing this in Ethiopia, and you can't buy phone numbers uh, in Ethiopia from Twilio because most phone numbers, to buy a phone number in Twilio, you need to register there, and you also have to have someone who uh, is a citizen um, to vouch for you. So, um, so what I did was I bought a phone number in South Africa, and so all the calls come from South Africa. It's more costly, but that, that is a workaround. Um, 
So yeah, and then the other thing is a lot of these other organizations that I listed, companies, um, they're going to have, like, they'll have several, um, they'll have several agreements with different uh, telcos in case the first number doesn't go through. And their last resort's going to be to call, like what I said, from an international number if it doesn't go through. Um, the last thing is, like, I, like I said, I'm not a web developer. I don't know a ton about security. So, uh, at, you know, after this gets rolled out, I'm starting to test it in August, I need to hand it to somebody to make sure that the data that's um, being passed back and forth um, isn't compromised. And then lastly, if I want customization, uh, that'll take some work. So in terms of uh, pricing, um, this is an example of one company. You can, you can see right away how much cheaper it is to do it yourself. So to get one of these ready-made solutions, first you have to pay sort of a, you have to pay a monthly fee of about like $300, then you need to pay another fee for tech support, and then you need to pay another fee if you want them to help you with your survey. It comes out into the thousands per month. And then on top of that, you have to pay for all the phone calls you make, which uh, they part of margin on. So Africa is particularly expensive. Um, Nigeria, most of East Af and West Africa is pretty expensive. Asia is a, a little bit cheaper. But 30, 35 cents per minute per call um, can get pretty expensive. So for this app, um, the tools that we used, I built this with another, um, another colleague of mine at Columbia. Uh, we used Flask, Twilio, uh, Postgres, and it's all on a Heroku server. And the main packages that we used, um, Flask again, Twilio, uh, Jinja, and our database isn't fully um, worked out. But um, when it is, <laughs> um, SciCop and then requests to do all the handle all the requests. And so the setup, I mean, it's a very lightweight application. Uh, I can just sort of show you really quickly how how few files there are. Um, so I mean, most of the as you know with Flask, most of the functionality is in the views, and it's it's pretty short. We don't have that many. Uh, files, so we just have our views, <coughs> um, our database, and requirements. Um, what is our other big file? Our config file. I mean, most of it is in views, and it's really not that long. And then you can see that the app itself. Give it a second. Um, is very lightweight. Like this is we didn't build it. Uh, we didn't build it to sell it. We built it to use it just for the farmers that we work with. Um, so let me just go back to the presentation. We'll do a demo in a second. Um, so really all you need for your environment to work is a, a working phone number, which you can purchase on Twilio pretty easy uh, within like seconds, and your account IDs. And that's about it. Um, so in case you're interested in doing this yourself, you'll find that there's a lot of competitors to Twilio. And I, you can, the main competitors are like Tropo and Plivo. I didn't do a ton of research myself. Um, Twilio is a little bit more expensive um, compared to some of their competitors, but it's a, from what I can tell, it's a bit more responsive in terms of their help. Um, and if you want a complete <laughs> list of all the competitors, Google this, Google 578 telephony. There's somebody who created this enormous list of 578 competitors uh, to Twilio and, and their pros and cons. But like I said, Plivo is one of their main competitors. Um, apparently, they have... Um, better voice quality and also have voice recognition. Um, so you'll hear when we do a demo for Twilio, the voice is pretty crummy. The other thing, Twilio 
I had trouble with um, is uploading my own voice messages and then um, for, to send the call. So right now what it's using is I just type in the question and it'll either, it can speak Spanish, it can speak French, uh, I don't know what else, but like for instance it couldn't speak Amharic, which is the language in Ethiopia, so you'd need someone to speak the message and then upload it. And it wasn't, we tried multiple times and we couldn't get it to work even with Twilio's help, so we have to go back and fix that. Um, the nice thing about Twilio is they have full-on um, tutorials where you can see previous uh, web apps step-by-step step and work off of that. So that's nice. Plivo doesn't have that as far as I know. Um, and it's super easy to add IVR, uh, so any voice calls because, I don't know if you can tell, but Basically, it records all, it records any digits. Um, so if you say, you know, press one to, uh, press one to buy insurance, or press two if you don't want to buy insurance. Um, if one, then tell me if it rained, if, if, and press two if it didn't rain. And so then you ping a Twilio's API just to get, to get those digits back. And it's nice to have this option um, instead of SMS, especially if you're dealing with like really gnarly scripts like Amharic or, um, uh, or Devangari for India. Um, and also because a lot of these individuals are illiterate, so you can't count on them being able to read the SMS. And so it's a lot nicer to have the voice option. Um, so then we put it onto Heroku simply because it's really easy and it pushes uh, automatic, once you push to GitHub, it automatically deploys on Heroku. You, it's an option, you can set it off. Um, so getting to the app itself, uh, I'll go back to it. So we have three, pa four pages. Um, we have a page for it's pretty flexible, like this doesn't have to just be used for insurance. All we do is you can type your initial message in and then your messages for press one, press two. Um, we'd have to build it out a little bit more to do more than that, but um, I'm not gonna, I, <laughs> I was fooling around with the questions last night and testing it out and I had an error and then I finally fixed it this morning, so I'm not gonna uh, play with it here because the questions that's in there is good. Um, and then for users, pretty easy to add a user, and then add your phone number, and uh, call or SMS. So right now it's set to the Dominican Republic, um, and in the DR, you can only send voice for whatever reason through Twilio. So that's another, that's another thing to consider is um, in some countries you can only send voice, in some countries you can only send SMS. So would anybody like to be the guinea pig for being called? <laughs> I need your phone number. <laughs> sure. Uh, what's your phone number? <laughs> what? 646. Six. Eight nine five one five six one. What's your name? Gabriel. Uh, I'm gonna just say you're from New York. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you and your anything? It should say like press one for insurance. <laughs> yeah, press one. I can also do it to myself. Um, here, why don't we do this? I'll call myself, and then you can hear. You can also then hear the voice quality, which is not that good. Um, Hello, press 
Oh, that's not right. Hmm. Sorry, that's not audible. Um, right now, the question is, press one if awesome, press two is great. <laughs> and that's it. I, so I had it on insurance before, and it wasn't working for some reason. Anyways, I'm sorry I can't, you can't hear it. But uh, I think it's, it's pretty simple and uh, clear what happens. Um, and then the other thing you can do is just, um, you can just get all of the calls that you've sent from Twilio. Uh, we, ha we have it here so that you can just download it as a CSV for anybody that we work with who wants to just get all the data. Um, but we're still organizing it into tables for our, for our Postgres database. So um, that's it. Any questions? <laughs> Oh, um, I'm at Columbia. I'm a researcher there, and I, so like I said, I do mostly data and um, both like experimental design and like um, these Bayesian hierarchical models for weather. And when we, when we were working on the model, um, the Bayesian model, the the biggest problem was the re low resolution of the data, and we had like no cross validation, and we had. In some places, we have rain gauges, so um, we have two time series that we can use sort of the correlation between them to get a better predictor. But rain gauges aren't everywhere, so this would this is why I thought of like, well, why don't we just ask people um, if it's raining or not? And that's how we started to do this. Yeah. How has it worked out? So I've only. I've only kind of alpha tested it with a few farmers, and it works fine. Um, they kind of the one thing is they have to be they have to know what what it is all about. Um, but so in August we're going to start like adding like a few hundred farmers at a time and see how that uh, works. But I mean, so far so good. <laughs> Um, yeah, through this front end, I can I can load up a list of cell phones and just use the the scripts that send the phone numbers. But yeah, I need to work on that. <laughs> we have thirty seconds. Ask another question. Okay. Well, thanks. <laughs>